Hello students, as we all know diarrhea is a very common illness. Many people suffer from diarrhea more than once in a year. However, most of the times diarrhea is not serious and it's self-limiting. That means it cures on its own. So in today's video, we will discuss features of acute diarrhea. It causes pathophysiology and treatment. Now, acute diarrhea is defined as an abrupt onset, that is sudden onset of three or more loose, liquid or watery stools per day, lasting for no longer than two weeks. So, it's important to note that acute diarrhea lasts for less than two weeks or for two weeks. If the diarrhea lasts for two to four weeks, it is termed as persistent diarrhea and chronic diarrhea lasts longer than four weeks. Now, talking about the etiology or causes of acute diarrhea. Now, usually acute diarrhea is caused because of the viral infections. Now, most common virus in children is rotavirus and in adults is the norovirus. And viral infection is usually self-limited. That means it uh, cures on its own and therefore uh, symptomatic treatment is provided in most of the cases. Then uh, bacterial infection. Bacterial infection occurs if diarrhea is because of uh, traveling, that is the uh, traveler's diarrhea or due to foodborne illness, that is illness caused by the consumption or by the ingestion of food contaminated with virus, bacteria or their toxins. Now most common bacteria are the sugar toxin producing E. coli, Campylobacter species, Salmonella species, Shigella species. So, acute diarrhea is an infectious diarrhea caused by viral or bacterial infections. Uh, now, let's uh, discuss pathophysiology of uh, acute diarrhea caused by bacterial and viral infections. Now, diarrhea is caused by increased secretion and or decreased absorption of food and electrolytes across the intestinal epithelium. Now, uh, let's first understand how non-invasive bacteria produces diarrhea. Here we are given examples of uh, anterotoxigenic E. coli that is ATEC bacteria and Vibrio cholera. Now, both these bacteria are non-invasive bacteria that means they do not invade or they do not enter the mucosal epithelial cells of the intestine. But these bacteria produce toxins. And these toxins increase secretion and reduce absorption of water and electrolytes, thus producing diarrhea. Now, anterotoxigenic E. coli produces heat-stable endotoxin, while Vibrio cholera produces cholera toxin. Now, these bacteria uh, produce mostly self-limiting loose watery diarrhea. And this diarrhea persists for not more than two weeks. Look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram clearly explains how non-invasive bacteria increase secretion and reduce absorption leading to diarrhea. Now this diagram shows an intestinal cell. Now toxins uh, from non-invasive bacteria increase intracellular levels of uh, cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP and calcium. Now increased cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP activate CFTR chloride channels which increase chloride ion secretion in the lumen of intestine. Now increased calcium increases activity of uh, calcium activated chloride channels which further increases chloride secretion in the intestinal lumen. So this is how chloride secretion increases in the intestinal lumen. Now apart from this, increased levels of uh, cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP and calcium also inhibit sodium hydrogen exchanger 3 that is NHE3 which inhibits, which inhibits reabsorption of sodium and water. And apart from this, toxins also increase release of 5-hydroxytryptamine from anterochromaffin cells, which further inhibit reabsorption of sodium in the intestinal cells and increase secretion of chloride in the intestinal lumen. And thus, there is increase in the chloride secretion, 
inhibition of uh, sodium and fluid absorption causing diarrhea. Now this is the slide that explains the mechanism by which invasive bacteria produce diarrhea. Now invasive bacteria like Shigella and Campylobacter, they invade small and large intestinal mucosal epithelial cells. That means they enter, uh, they pass inside the intestinal cells. Now in the cells, these bacteria stimulate release of pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrotic factor, interleukin 6, interleukin 8. Now these pro-inflammatory cytokines, they produce ulceration and destruction of intestinal mucosal epithelium. Apart from this, these pro-inflammatory cytokines, they cause intracellular calcium signaling. They increase the availability of calcium inside the cell. Now this calcium, it enhances chloride secretion in the intestinal lumen mediated by calcium activated chloride channels. So there is an increase in the secretion of chloride in the intestinal lumen. On the other hand, this calcium inhibits absorption of sodium inside the intestinal cells mediated through sodium hydrogen exchanger 3. So, uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, these invasive bacteria, they invade intestinal cells and they inhibit, they inhibit uh, sodium absorption and they enhance chloride secretion which results in diarrhea. Uh, now, let us uh, discuss pathogenesis of uh, uh, viral diarrhea. Now, here Anteric rotavirus is a virus. It produces a toxin called as antirotoxin. This antirotoxin, it acts on the intestinal cell and causes increase in the cytoplasmic calcium. Now, this increase in the cytoplasmic calcium stimulates calcium activated chloride channels, thereby increasing the secretion of chloride ions in the intestinal lumen. On the other hand, this increase in the calcium concentration inhibits sodium glucose co-transporter 1, thereby inhibiting absorption of sodium ions in the intestinal cells. Apart from this, this increase in the cytoplasmic calcium also inhibits sodium hydrogen exchanger 3, thereby further inhibiting absorption of sodium ions in the intestinal cells. So, on one hand, there is increase in the chloride secretion. On the other hand, there is inhibition of sodium absorption and this results in diarrhea. Uh, so, now we have understood that uh, uh, acute diarrhea is mostly caused by infections. Now, clinically, infectious diarrhea is classified as non-inflammatory diarrhea, which is a mild diarrhea and inflammatory diarrhea that is a severe diarrhea. Now, there are two types of bacteria, the bacteria that produce toxin, for example, antirotoxigen, toxigenic E. coli, then invasive bacteria uh, like, for example, Shigella and Campylobacter. Uh, let's talk about the differences between non-inflammatory and inflammatory diarrhea. Non-inflammatory diarrhea causes mostly viral infection, but it can also be bacterial or parasitic infection. Common microbes, rotavirus, noro, norovirus, antirotoxigenic E. coli, vibrio cholera. This we have seen uh, while discussing the pathophysiology of uh, diarrhea also. Uh, then symptoms, very important to note that uh, non-inflammatory diarrhea is a diarrhea where the uh, diarrhea is watery diarrhea. There are, uh, there is no blood in the uh, in the stools. So, symptoms are nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, large stool volume and watery diarrhea. Stool, stool examination shows absence of fecal leukocytes. Since there is no inflammation of colon, uh, there are no leukocytes in the stools. Then uh, inflammatory diarrhea, uh, the bacterial infection, it is caused by the bacterial infection, mostly invasive bacteria. Uh, that is those bacteria which invade the intestinal cells and produce inflammation of colon. Uh, common microbes are Salmonella and non typhi species, Shigella, Campylobacter, Shiga toxin producing E. coli. Symptoms include a fever, abdominal pain, tenesmus that is fecal urgency, 
bloody mucopurulent and stools small volume stools and the presence of leukocytes in the feces presence of leukocytes in the stools because the diarrhea is inflammatory diarrhea there is inflammation of the colon let's uh, discuss management of uh, acute diarrhea acute onset diarrhea is usually self limited that means it cures on its own and therefore as such treatment is not required if any treatment is given that is only for the symptomatic relief now an important aspect of diarrhea management is uh, replenishing food and electrolyte loss which can be accomplished by the administration of uh, oral rehydration solution therefore replenish fluid and electrolyte loss now secondly eating food lower in the fiber may also help in relieving diarrhea so a bland brat diet is recommended and this diet consists of bananas b stands for bananas r stands for the rice that is a white rice a stands for the apple sauce and t stands for the toast white toast now apart from this curds curds is a very good source of beneficial bacteria that is a lactobacillus oat meal and soups are also well tolerated anti secretory anti motility agents like uh, loperamide can also be administered if required now uh, these uh, drugs they reduce the duration of acute diarrhea uh, however loperamide should be avoided in high fever severe abdominal cramps or dysentery that is blood in the stools and also in children antimicrobial therapy is prescribed in few cases and here it reduces the duration and severity of acute diarrhea now in what watery diarrhea uh, fluoroquinolones that is a uh, norfloxacin ciprofloxacin uh, azithromycin as well as rifa, uh, as well as rifaximin can be administered uh, whereas in the bloody diarrhea that is in the dysentery azithromycin uh, should be used so this is in brief on causes pathophysiology and treatment of acute diarrhea this video is meant to provide general information on acute diarrhea which is in most of the cases self limited uh, that is cures on its own for treatment kindly consult your physician if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video